Well, hi everybody. I'm Greg, the Avid Amateur. In this video, I made three sets of candles, holders. You can see them here. And I made them a little differently because I, I used the duplicator. So you might want to watch that. But the reason I'm preempting this video is that uh, I'm giving the three sets away and I've already picked the, the winners and the winners are three people, three families that have been my most loyal followers and have given me the most comments and the most thumbs up over the last, well I guess about four years now that I've been doing this. So I just want them to appreciate, or know that I appreciate, uh, their loyalty and their support and I'll be doing something like this from time to time but I'll be mailing these out right away and getting getting them to my loyal followers so I appreciate you all but of course I can't give everybody one so I had to, I had to pick I had to pick the top three I know what you're asking what's he making now looks like a cone. Well, it is a cone. Of course, your next question is, <clears throat> What's the cone for? Well, I tell you what. Stick around till the almost the end of the movie, and you'll find out how important this little cone is to woodworking. See you then. Well, what's going on in the shop today? Well, those candle holders that I made in the last video, I have orders for three sets. Now orders are not what you think. People aren't stepping up to the plate and buying them. That's not what I'm talking about. The boss has friends and she wants to give her friends each a set of those candle holders. So I'm down in the shop generating sawdust and I'm going to do like the last video I'm just going to show you the process well no show you the start of each process but not show you the process otherwise tell you what I'm going to do and not spit, waste a lot of your time with the boring stuff of actually doing it I think that makes for a better video now I'm going to do these a little different. Last time I turned them all with by hand with gouges, the three, but this time I made patterns and I'm going to put my duplicator back on the lathe and I'll be making them one at a time, one size at a time. So the little one I'll make all three and then the middle size all three and then the large one all three at once. And I'll show you the process of how to do that and to do it uh, with a, a degree of accuracy and uh, continuity between the, between the sets. So the first thing I'm going to do this morning is uh, cut the center pieces. And I'll show you what that is after I get it all cut and do the glue up. And that's all I can do today. And then tomorrow, the next row of pieces around it and then the following day the next row and glue up and you know you know you know what I'm talking about if you don't watch the last video you'll see but anyway I'll show you the process and I'm going to get to sawing making sawdust and then I'll get back to you well here are my pieces for the first glue up this is the center glue up walnut walnut oak oak Now, you don't just stick them together, you, you look at your pieces real carefully, and I turn this over, and you can see there's a, 
a flaw in the wood here. Well, I'm going to glue that to the inside so that it won't show when I turn it. This oak, he's got a light side and a dark side, and I'm putting the light side out for the greater contrast. So that's what I'm doing, and all I'll do is I'll slop glue, glue in here and clamp it up. I'll show you what clamping it up looks like in just a minute. Well, this is what a glue up looks like. I have 18 clamps. Every little clamp that I've got that'll work, I've got on this. And that's really necessary because you don't want any gaps. Now, when you clamp like this and you glue like this, there's going to be a lot of squeeze out between the cracks. And I've cleaned all the squeeze out off, which will save me a lot of work later, because these pieces have to be smooth. If they're not smooth, the next piece you glue to it won't glue right. You have a big bubble of glue in there. So in all these cracks, well, there was squeeze out. And if there's not squeeze out, that means you don't have enough glue in there. Oh yeah, one other thing. These have to be perfectly square and perfect in size with one another. And they're all 17 30 seconds by 17 30 seconds. All four pieces are same, exactly the same. As close as I can make it to being exactly the same anyway. So, all right, well that's the glue up. We'll let that set overnight to get a good solid glue. And then we'll have to glue the next layer on. Till then, well tragedy has been averted. I glued this one up yesterday and I glued it up wrong. Can you believe that? I had the two walnut together and the two oak together instead of crossing them. I came back down two hours later and realized I screwed up. Now the only way to get them apart is with a heat gun. And I heated this up. It took, oh, I don't know, probably 20 minutes to get it all apart. But uh, it was a good thing because I'm out of walnut. <laughs> If I had to tear it up, why? I'd have, been, I'd have ruined it. I'd have to wait now. But anyway, uh, we're going to glue up the next layer this morning. Here's the piece I've already glued up. So here's the walnut, walnut, oak, oak. And then around here, this is cherry. That's the next layer. And that's what it looks like. So I'll be taking the clamps off of that one and uh, putting these pieces on. These are uh, 3 16 And you notice they overlap on the corners. You have to do that. You can't put them together without overlapping. So anyway, that's where we're at. That's what we're doing. Tragedy has been averted. And uh, we're off to gluing the other two up. I'll get back at you a little bit. I'll show you a little trick. Now I've got glue on this and I've got to put glue of course on all the other sides and I've got to put these boards on and the problem is how do I get them on there without clamping them on there while I glue the other sides. Well let me show you a little trick here. You take this board, you put it on here, see now it's still loose, you slide it back and forth and as you slide it I don't know, it's like it forms a suction or something, but it'll get really tight to it. Now I can pick it up and it doesn't slide around so bad. And I can go ahead and glue my other side. And I can go on around like that before I put the clamps on. So that's just a little tip. That sliding action kind of makes a suction. Give you a little tip on these glue brushes. They're cheap. 
and the tendency is to use them and throw them away. Why clean them? I mean, we're talking, what, 15, 20 cents here a piece at, at the most. I'm, I'm not sure what they are. You get a whole bag for two or three dollars. But because they are cheap, the bristles tend to come out, or at least they come out at the beginning. So what I do is I find that after I use them for a while, the bristles don't come out anymore. And if the bristle comes out, you got to clean it off because that, that'll leave a gap in your glue up. And so what I do, I clean them and reuse them because after the first time, the bristles don't come out anymore. So not not doing it to save money. I mean, that's, you know, they're just cheap. <laughs> but doing it because I'm not cleaning bristles all the time out of out of my glue up because the bristles that are going to come out already all come out. You know, that's, that's the way it is. Other than that, I don't know. Okay, well my glue's drying up on the candles project. I found this piece of scrap and I've been turning a just a little trivet. Now we have to mount it a little differently, so we have this kind of a, a face plate that see it attaches this way. These little things will hold it in. It mounts on the same chuck. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna finish it off here. I want to smooth out the little plug I put in the center and then uh, I want to make these into uh, I want to round these over I don't like the way it looks here so I want to dig this a little deeper and then round these over make a bead out of it so that's where I'm at and that's what I'm doing and I think it's going to look pretty good considering it was just a piece of throwaway scrap I was going to use it to break up and use it for smoking on the charcoal grill. It's oak, it'd smell real good, but uh, get some use out of it this way. I'll show it to you when I get done. Well, there it is, trivet. All done, shined up. Not bad, considering it's just taken out of a piece of scrap. So if you enjoyed this short, uh, give me a thumbs up. If you learned something, give me a thumbs up, subscribe, share, you know, all that good stuff. Hey, and I appreciate you watching. So you know what it looks like. I'm cutting tenons on the end of these. You see my line there? I cut the tenon so it'll fit in my chuck. And I'm using this carbide tool to do it. So I'll show you what that looks like. That's what it looks like. Well, here they all are with the tenons cut. You can see what they look like. Now I cut them all at once so that I don't have to keep switching my equipment in and out. You know, make a tenon, then cut a cut a candle, and then make a tenon, cut a candle. It takes different equipment. This is called spindle turning. I had two spindles in there. Show you what they look like. I have this spindle. This is on the motor end, and on the tail end, I have this spindle. It's called spindle turning. So I do all the spindle turning all at one time. The next, I'll be loading the duplicator in, put my patterns on, and cutting it with the duplicator. 
So when I get set up, I'll show you what it looks like. Well, this is what the setup looks like on the duplicator. You just bring that cutting knife right there up against the wood and turn away. Start her up and turn away. If you want to know how this works on a Vega, why well, I have a video on that. I'll put a link uh, below. As you can see from all the sawdust, I've been really busy because it's thick. <laughs> Wish there was something I could do with that. I suppose that'd make good bedding for a gerbil. Now here's what they look like. Yesterday I did some repair work on the damage. And there they are all stacked up, ready to be sanded and finished. One thing I learned from this I use alder for the last layer of wood and that was a bad decision. Alder does not turn well. It's too soft and it splits out. So anyway, there they are and I'm gonna get busy, sand them down and then I'll show you the next step. Now I'm putting them in my... <coughs> whoops, got my mask on, hard to talk. I'm putting them in my chuck because I'm going to be drilling a hole in this end as soon as I get done sanding them. So I'm going to sand them down, get them all ready to finish, then I'll pull this back, put it in my drill chuck, and drill a hole for the candle. So that's next. And I got to have them in a chuck like this. I can't have them, of course, on this because as soon as I take the pressure off of this end, they'll fall off. So that's the story, and that's what I'm doing. Sanding, getting ready to drill a hole. Okay, I'm ready to drill holes. And what, what you do first, you drill your final hole. You drill just a little bit of it, because I'm going to drill the full depth with this smaller drill. And the reason for that is, is to make it easier for the big drill to drill the final hole. But I need to start this because once I get this little hole drilled, I won't be able to center this drill. You know, there's a centering hole there, a little centering hole, pinhole, and I stick this drill in it. I'll drill about, oh, I don't know, a quarter of an inch maybe, just a little bit. Then I'll take it off, I'll drill the, the full depth with a smaller drill, and then I'll come back, put this back on, and drill the final depth with it. Now the reason for that is, because this type of drill, these sawtooth drills, they drill real well, but uh, they get hot. And by drilling a smaller hole and in the big hole, why, doesn't get near as hot. If it gets hot, it'll lose its sharpness. So that's where I'm at. I'm going to drill just a little ways in. Then I'm going to put this on and drill all the way in. And then put this back on and drill all the way in. That's where I'm at. That's what I'm doing. I'll get back to you. Remember the cone that I made at the beginning of this video? Well, here's what it's for. I've got the hole in this. Well, there's no way to mount that. So you put a cone there. And you put some this shelf liner stuff where it won't slip and the cone fits down there tight. Now I can take off my tenon on the other end. See how that works? It just slides on there, you tighten it up, it's ready to go. That's what the cone's for. Alright, well here they are with uh, three coats of lacquer all cured and set up. Eh, they look pretty good. Pretty nice finish. What I'm going to do now is <clears throat> mix up some wax and pumice and polish them and then finish them off with some feed and wax. This is 4F pumice. It's about as, well, it's not quite as fine as you can get. It's as fine a pump as a pumice as you can get, but there's other products that are actually finer. But uh, <clears throat> mix this with wax and buff it. Uh, it should turn out uh, really nice. 
a nice soft uh, shiny finish if that can be such a thing as soft and shiny so I'm going to put them back on the lathe and uh, buff them up get back to you when I'm done here's the process I mix up some Mohawk pumice 4F with feeding wax and I put it on this little board and I, I just make it a paste you know I, I don't know what the proportions are just where it's kind of pasty you know I just don't know I just mix it up till it feels right and then I <clears throat> have a piece on the lathe and I put it on this rag and I burnish it right in at about oh I don't know 800 850 rpm something like that then when I get that done I use tree wax it's a carnauba wax and I put carnauba wax on there <clears throat> and I rub it real hard burnish that in and then I wipe it off immediately you don't want to leave carnauba wax on there it get very difficult to get off and here's the finished product it makes a it makes it really slick and just a not a <clears throat> real glossy glossy shine but still a, a nice shine a little little better than a semi gloss a little less than a glossy gloss and that's what it looks like and it feels just oh like silk it's so soft here's one that hasn't been done it's glossier just marginally but it doesn't feel have that slick soft feel so that's what I'm doing and I gotta finish them up so that they all look like this when I get done why we'll show them to you again here's what pumice looks like and I got a little feeding wax on there looks like I need a little more Pumice is ground up lava rock. Just a little more. I'll have enough then to finish them. All right, just keep mixing that up till you get a nice paste. Yeah, real simple. No magic. Okay, guys. Okay, if I can do this with one hand, I'll show you what this looks like. Get a little of that pumice on your rag. You just, you just carry it across. See, there's my cone in there. I'm not, I don't think you can do this too much. Yeah, that should do it. Let's take a look. No, it doesn't look like much now. It's all dry, and, but you gotta wipe that off. So, Boy, it's just as slick as it can be. You got a nice shine, but now we're going to put some carnauba wax on there. Added shine and added protection. Let me get my wax. Oh, 
why I tell you the shop is a disaster. It seems like it takes every tool you got to do this. So you take that wax, you get a little wax on your rag. Mine's just about gone. Boy, the price of this stuff though, you don't want to waste any of it. Well, I got a little got a little on my rag. And I just kind of gently gently rub this in. Let it kind of burnish. It'll get hot in fact. That's the best way to do it when it's hot. Okay, when you get that done, you want to wipe that off, like I said, immediately. Let's make it shine. Well, that's the process, my friends. Final reveal coming up. Well, happy Valentine's Day, folks, and here they are in all their glory. Thanks for watching. You know, give me a thumbs up, subscribe, share, all that good stuff. Every little bit helps. It keeps that algorithm uh, finding my videos. So far, I don't have much of an algorithm. <laughs> but uh, anyway, I need your help. So uh, again, thanks for watching. And uh, in the meantime, you know, keep your shutter clicking and your wheels turning and all that good stuff. And I'll see you on the rebound. Hey, thanks again.